welcome to Urgent Care on Call. My name is Dr. John Essen, also known as Dr. E to many of you. I am a practicing emergency medicine physician, and by popular request, I am here to discuss strokes and everything you need to know about preventing a stroke. So let's start out by talking about some numbers. Stroke is the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. Nearly 800,000 people have a stroke each year. That equates to about one person every 40 seconds or so. Quite alarming. In the United States, approximately 40% of the people dying from strokes are males, with 60% of deaths occurring in females. According to the American Heart Association, compared with Caucasians, African Americans have nearly twice the risk of a first-time stroke and a much higher risk of death from a stroke. So this is a big deal. Let's talk about strokes then. What is a stroke? Uh, a stroke uh, usually occurs when the supply of blood to the brain is either interrupted or reduced. When this happens, the brain does not get enough oxygen and or the much needed nutrients and the brain cells just simply die off. In other words, think of a stroke as a brain attack, a medical emergency that needs immediate medical attention. Um, let's talk about treatment. It is not only important that the type of stroke is diagnosed quickly to reduce the damage done to the brain, but also because the treatment suitable for one type of stroke may be harmful uh, if used to treat a different type of stroke, and we'll explain why. Uh, the two most common forms of strokes are the ischemic and the hemorrhagic strokes, uh, and they both have different causes. So let's talk about ischemic strokes. These are the strokes uh, that are caused by arteries being blocked or narrowed, and so treatments usually focuses on restoring or recanalizing uh, an adequate flow of blood to the brain. And this often starts with drugs that break down clots and prevent others from forming. Uh, we are all familiar with aspirin as well as injectable tissue plasminogen activators, which are known as TPA. TPA is very effective at dissolving clots, but need to be injected within four and a half hours of stroke symptoms starting. Other procedures that can be carried out uh, to decrease the risk of strokes or TIAs, which we'll discuss later, that's worth mentioning, include what's known as a carotid endotherectomy, which involves a surgeon opening the carotid and physically removing any plaque that might be causing the blockage. Alternatively, an angioplasty could also be done, and this involves a surgeon inflating a small balloon in a narrowed artery via a catheter and then inserting a tube or a stent into the opening. This prevents the arteries from narrowing in the future. So let's talk about hemorrhagic stroke now that we've talked about um, ischemic stroke. These strokes are caused by blood leaking into the brain. So treatment, as you can imagine, focuses on controlling bleeding and reducing the pressure to the brain. Uh, treatment often involves, uh, begins with drugs given to reduce pressure in the brain, control overall blood pressure, and also to prevent uh, seizures from occurring. If an individual is taking a blood thinning anticoagulant or an antiplatelet medication like warfarin known as Coumadin or Clopidogrel known as Plavix, they can be given drugs to counter the effects of medication or blood transfusions uh, may also be used to uh, replace the blood loss. Surgery can be used to repair any problem with blood vessels that have led or could lead to hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, now that uh, we've treated the patients with stroke, what next? Rehabilitation is probably the most important step after treating a stroke. Uh, remember, strokes are life-changing events that can affect both people, uh, both physically and emotionally. So after a stroke, successful recovery will often involve specific therapies and support such as uh, either speech therapy, which helps uh, with problems uh, producing and or understanding speech that had been lost, 
physical therapy, uh, which can help a person learn or relearn movements and coordination. Occupational therapy, <clears throat> this is usually used to help a person to improve their ability to carry out routine daily activities such as bathing, cooking, dressing, eating, reading, and even writing. Uh, support groups help with uh, common mental health problems such as depression, which often occurs after a stroke. And you cannot, you cannot underestimate uh, the support from family and friends. So as you see, rehabilitation is an important and ongoing part of treatments with the right assistance and support of loved ones. Rehabilitation to a normal quality of life is possible depending on the severity of the stroke. Uh, now we can talk about prevention. The best way to prevent a stroke is to address the underlying causes. This is best achieved through lifestyle changes, including eating a healthy diet, maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, not smoking tobacco or avoiding or limiting amounts of alcohol intake, uh, keeping blood pressure under control, and of course, managing other, other comorbidities such as diabetes. And you have, if you happen to have sleep apnea, that needs to be addressed also. This brings us to the end of part one of our discussion on stroke. Uh, don't forget to leave comments or let us know about topics you would like to discuss in the future. Also, don't forget to reach down and subscribe to our channel and become a subscriber. And if you would like to be notified about new videos, reach down and click the little bell next to the subscription button. And don't forget for all your non-emergence needs, follow us or come to our telemedicine platform at Urgent Care on Call, www.urgentcareoncall. Thank you for the thumbs up.